November 3rd, 1899, Volume 3, Amusement of Jesus with Louisa. This morning my lovable Jesus came and transported me outside of myself inside a church. Then he disappeared, and I was left alone. Now finding myself in the presence of the Most Holy Sacrament, I did my usual adoration. But while I was doing this, I seemed to have become all eyes to see whether I could catch sight of sweet Jesus. At that moment, I saw him on the altar as a child, calling me with his gracious little hand. Who can say my contentment? I flew to him, and without thinking of anything else, I clasped him in my arms and I kissed him. But in the act in which I was doing this, he assumed a serious appearance, showing that he did not like my kisses, and he began to reject me. Heedless of this, I continued and I said to him, My pretty little one, beautiful one, the other day you wanted to pour yourself out with me, with kisses and with hugs, and I gave you all the freedom. Today I too want to pour myself out with you. Oh, please, give me the freedom to do it. But he continued to reject me, and in seeing that I would not stop, he disappeared. Who can say how mortified and concerned I was left as I found myself inside myself? However, after a little while he came back, and as I wanted to ask him for forgiveness for my impertinences, he forgave me by wanting to pour himself out with me. And while kissing me, he told me, Beloved of my heart, my divinity resides in you habitually, and just as you keep inventing new things to make me delight with you, so I, to give you tit for tat, use new ways to make you delight with me. With this I understood that it had been a joke that Jesus wanted to make. November 3rd, 1907, Volume 8 The Soul and the Divine Will Must Concur in Everything This morning, as I was in my usual state, I felt him move in my interior, repeating, Let us go higher. On hearing this, I shrugged my shoulders, saying, Lord, why do you say, Let us go higher? Say, rather, I will go higher with my chastisements. I am afraid to put my will into it. And he, My daughter, my will and yours are one, and if I say, Let us go higher with chastisements, do I not say the same in the good I do to the creatures, which surpasses, oh, by far, the chastisements? Also, are you not united with me in the many other chastisements which I do not send? So, one who is united in good, should he not be united in mortifications? Between me and you there must be no division. You are nothing but tiny little grass, which God delighted in endowing with a marvelous virtue. And just as one who does not know the virtue that this tiny little grass contains, tramples it and does not even look at it in the same way one who does not know the gift which i have placed in you and the virtue which my little grass contains not only tramples you but does not understand how i delight in giving value to the littlest things after this he seemed to lean his head upon mine and i said oh please let me feel your thorns and he, do you want me to beat you? And I, yes. At that moment, a rod armed with balls of fire found itself in the hands of Jesus. And I, seeing the fire, Lord, I am afraid of fire. Beat me only with the rod. And he, you don't want to be beaten and I am going away and he disappeared without giving me the time to pray him to beat me as he pleased. 
Oh, how concerned and afflicted I remained. But he, who is so good, will forgive me. November 3rd, 1910, Volume 9, The Soul, Paradise of Jesus on Earth. This morning, blessed Jesus made himself seen in my interior in the act of cheering himself and of relieving himself of the many bitternesses of creatures. And he said these simple words, You are my paradise on earth, my comfort. And he disappeared. November 3rd, 1919, Volume 12 taking part in the pains of the state of victim of Jesus. I was concerned about my poor state. The pain of his privation petrifies me, though I remain calm and all abandoned in my sweet Jesus. Heaven seems to be closed to me. As for the earth, it is a long time that I have not even known it. And since I don't know it, how can I hope for help? So I do not have even the sweet hope of hoping for help from the people of this poor world. If I did not have sweet hope in my Jesus, in my life, in my all, my only and sole support, I don't know what I would do. Then seeing that I could not take any more, my always lovable Jesus came and placing his holy hand on my forehead in order to give me strength, told me, Poor daughter, daughter of my heart and of my pains, courage, do not lose heart. Nothing is over for you. On the contrary, when it seems to be over, then it begins. Of all that you are thinking, nothing is true. Rather, your current state is nothing other than one point of the state of victim of my humanity. Oh, how many times my humanity found itself in these painful constraints. It was identified with my divinity. Even more, it was one with it. Yet, my divinity, which held all the power and demanded expiation for the whole human family, made me feel the denial the oblivion, the rigors, the detachment which the whole human nature deserved. These were the most bitter pains for me, and the more identified I was with the divinity, the more painful it was for me to feel the detachment while being united, to be loved and to feel forgotten, to be honored and experience denial holy, and see myself covered with all sins. What contrast, what pains, so much so that a miracle of my omnipotence was needed in order to suffer this. Now my justice wants the renewal of these pains of my humanity, and who could ever feel them if not one who is identified with me honored to the point of being called to live in the height of my volition, where, from the center of it, she takes all parts of all generations, unites them together and repairs me, loves me, substitutes for all creatures. And while doing this, she feels the oblivion, the denial, the detachment of the one who forms her very life. These are pains that only your Jesus can calculate. But in certain circumstances, they are necessary to me, so much so that I am forced to hide you more within me, so as not to make you feel all the bitterness of the pain. And while I hide you, I repeat what my humanity did and suffered. Therefore calm yourself. This state will end to make you pass on to other steps of my humanity. When you feel that you cannot take any more, abandon yourself more in me, and you will feel your Jesus praying, suffering, repairing, and you follow me. 
I will be the actor and you the spectator. And when you feel restored, you will take the part of the actor and I that of spectator. So we will alternate with each other. November 3rd, 1926, Volume 20. The more the soul has done the divine will on earth, the more paths she has formed for herself in order to receive suffrages in purgatory. The more the soul possesses of the divine will, the more value her prayers, works, and pains contain. I continue to live all abandoned in the adorable will, and while I was praying I thought to myself, how I would like to descend into the prisons of the purging souls to release them all, and in the light of the eternal will bring them all to the celestial fatherland. At that moment, my sweet Jesus moving in my interior told me, my daughter, the more the souls who have passed to the next life have been submitted to my will, and the more acts they have done in it, the more paths they have formed for themselves in order to receive suffrages from the earth. So, the more they have done my will, forming for themselves the ways of communications of the goods that are present in the church and that belong to me, there is no path formed by them that does not bring to some a relief to some a prayer, to some a diminution of pains. The suffrages walk within these royal paths of my will to bring to each one the merit, the fruit, and the capital that one has formed for oneself in my will. Therefore, without it, there are no paths and no means in order to receive suffrages. Even though the suffrages and everything that the church does always descend into purgatory, they go, however, to those who have formed paths for themselves. For the others who have not done my will, the paths are closed or do not exist at all. And if these were saved, it is because at least at the point of death, they have recognized the supreme dominion of my will. They have adored it and have submitted themselves to it and this last act has rescued them otherwise they could not even be saved for one who has always done my will there are no paths to purgatory his path goes straight to heaven and one who has recognized my will and has submitted to it not in everything and always but in great part has formed for himself so many paths and received so much that purgatory sends him quickly to heaven. Now, just as the purging souls had to form their paths to be able to receive suffrages, in the same way, the living, in order to send suffrages, must do my will in order to form their paths so as to make their suffrages ascend into purgatory. If they make suffrages, but they are far away from my will. Since the communication with my will is missing, that alone unites and binds everyone. Their suffrages will not find a way in order to ascend, the feet to be able to walk, the strength in order to give relief. They will be suffrages without life because the true life of my will is missing. That alone has the virtue of giving life to all goods. The more the soul possesses of my will, the more value her prayers, her works, her pains contain. And so she can bring more relief to those blessed souls. I measure and give value to everything that the soul can do according to how much of my will she possesses. If my will runs in all of her acts, the measure I take is immense, even more. I never stop measuring and I put so much value into it that its weight cannot be calculated. On the other hand, if one does not care much about my will, the measure is scarce and the value of little importance. And if one does not care at all, as much as the soul may do, I have nothing to measure nor any value to give. 
Therefore, if they have no value, how can they bring relief to those souls who, in purgatory, recognize nothing, nor can they receive anything but what my eternal fiat produces? But do you know who can bring all reliefs, the light that purifies, the love that transforms? One who possesses the life of my will in everything, and in whom it dominates triumphantly. This soul has not even need of paths, because by possessing my will she has the right to all paths. She can go to all points, because she possesses within herself the royal path of my will, in order to go into that deep prison, to bring them all reliefs and liberations. More so since, in creating man, we gave him our will as his special inheritance, and we recognize everything he has done within the boundaries of our inheritance, with what we endowed him. Anything else is not recognized by us. It is not our thing, nor can we allow anything to enter heaven that has not been done by creatures either in our will, or at least in order to do it. Since creation came out of the eternal fiat, our will, jealous, allows no act to enter the celestial fatherland that has not passed through its fiat itself. Oh, if all knew what will of God means, and how all works, even those that appear to be good, but are empty of it, our works empty of light, empty of value, empty of life, and works without light, without value, and without life, do not enter into heaven. Oh, how attentive they would be to do my will in everything and forever. November 3rd, 1936, Volume 34, Reflections Between the Creator and the Creature, Inseparability of Both. How in every instant God asks of her that she would receive the life of his will. How the one who decides to live of it God covers everything that she has done with his divine will. I am always in the arms of the divine volition. I feel its creative power inside and outside of me that, not giving me time for anything else, I do not want, I do not ask for anything else for me and for all than that the divine will come to reign on earth. My God! What magnetic force it possesses, that while it gives everything, it invests you from every part, but at the same time it takes everything that belongs to the littleness of the poor creature. But while my mind was immersed in the crowd of so many thoughts that regarded the divine fiat, my always lovable Jesus, visiting my little soul, all goodness told me, my blessed daughter, our infinite love is always excessive, and it gives of the incredible. It is enough to tell you that it is so much that we do nothing other than continually reflect in the creature. She lives under our continuous reflections. If we move, our incessant motion reflects in her in order to give her life. Our love reflects in her in order to tell her continuously, I love you. Our power reflects in her in order to sustain her. In sum, our wisdom reflects and directs her. Our light reflects and illuminates her. Our goodness reflects and compassionates her. Our beauty reflects and embellishes her. Our supreme being pours itself out over the creature without ever ceasing. But this is not everything. As we reflect ourselves in her, so she reflects in us. In fact, if she thinks, we feel the reflection of her thoughts. If she speaks, her words reflect in us. We feel the reflection of her heartbeat even in our bosom, the motion of her works, the treading of her feet. Such inseparability passes between the divine being and human that the one continuously pours itself into the other. And so much is our love, 
that we make it possible for ourselves to be as if we are not able to be without the creature. But this is still not everything. If our love does not give in excesses, it is not content. Now, knowing that if the creature does not possess the life of our divine volition, there is a great difference between her reflections and ours, disposing itself to supplicating love, as she thinks, it prays her that she let our will reign in her mind. If she speaks, it supplicates her that she make it reign in her words. If she palpitates, works, and walks, it implores her that she let my divine will reign in everything. In sum, in everything that she does, it has a moan, a sigh, a prayer, that continuously enveloping her tells her, Receive my fiat, let yourself be invested by my fiat, oh please, possess my fiat. Let me see in you the life of my fiat reigning, dominating and rejoicing. I pray you do not deny me your volition, and I will give you mine. And if it obtains this, as if it would have obtained the most precious thing, it encloses her in its love, it veils her with its light, and it begins its perennial feast in the creature. It exchanges its moans and sighs into joys, and placing itself on guard as triumphant, it hears in her the notes of its love that both parts say, we love each other with one single love. We hold and have the same life. Your fiat is yours and mine, such that the harmony, the order of her creator arises in her. Our will, our love, has obtained its purpose. Nothing else is left than to enjoy itself with its beloved creature. Therefore, my daughter, there is so much to take to heart, making the gift of our will as life, that it is our long sigh of all the centuries, rather, our eternal sigh, that gazing fondly at the creature with the portent of our life in her, we felt the joy, the happiness of so many of our lives bilocated, multiplied, and formed in them. Otherwise, it would not have been that great a creation, and if we created so many things and put them forth to the light of day, it was because it must serve the portent of portents, of forming, in virtue of our fiat, our life in the creature. And if this could not be, it would have been for us as if we had done nothing. Therefore, content your Jesus, give peace to my love that always goes into delirium, and uniting yourself with me, Sigh, pray, and ask that my will reign in you and in everyone. And while he said this, he took a veil of light and covered me completely, and I did not know how to go out from within it. After this, I continued to think about the divine will, and oh, how many sweet and dear surprises crossed my mind. Oh, if I knew how to say them with words, I would amaze the whole world, and everyone would love to possess the divine will. But alas, the language of heaven does not adapt itself to the language of the earth, and therefore I am constrained to continue on. And my beloved Jesus returning to his little and poor ignorant daughter with an indescribable love told me, Daughter of my volition, listen to me, pay attention to me. I want to tell you the most beautiful act, the most tender and intense love of my fiat. Now you must know that all acts, thoughts, words, past, present, and future, are all present before the Supreme Being. In fact, the creature did not yet exist in time and her acts shown before us. And why is this? Because the first act of the creature, my fiat does. 
There is no thought, word, work that my fiat does not begin. It can be said that first it is formed in God with all his acts, and then we put it forth to the light of day. Now the creature, by doing her will, withdraws from the divine acts, but she cannot destroy that the life of her acts had the fiat for beginning. Everything was its property, that acting as arbitrator it had changed human acts into divine. But if man disowns who has given life to his acts, my volition does not disown his acts. Therefore, listen to the greatest excess of the love of my volition. As the creature decides with immutable firmness to want to live of my will, letting it reign and dominate in her, her infinite goodness is so much, her love that does not know how to resist a true decision of the creature, more so because it does not want to see acts dissimilar from ours in her, listen to what it does. It covers everything that she has done up to then with my will. It molds them. It transforms them into its light in a way that everyone sees, with the prodigy of its transforming love, that everything is its will in the creature. And with love all divine, it continues to form its life and its acts in the creature. Is this not an excessive and amazing love of my volition? And together with this, of letting everyone decide, even the most ungrateful, of letting my will live in them, knowing that it wants to set everything aside and cover and supply for what is lacking of my will in them. This also absolutely says that our will wants to reign in the midst of creatures, that it does not want to pay attention to anything nor to what is lacking in them, wanting to give to them not as pay that it goes finding out if it is merited or not, but as gratuitous gift of our great liberality and as completion of our own will. And the completing of our will is everything for us. End of November 3rd Fiat 